Hey guys, it's Nathan from the Minecraft blog, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to use the plugin Command Shops. Before I begin, I just want to say that this video is intended to be a tutorial for people on our server to learn how to interact with shops, for instance, buying and selling, and for setting up their own shops. So, to show you kind of how this plugin works, I've created a shop here inside this area. Now, I know it's a shop, but I have no idea what they're selling here. So to find out, you type slash shop space browse, and that'll put into chat the prices and stock of the shop that you're standing in. So for instance, the shop is selling pumpkins for 50 clams, buying pumpkins for 40 clams, selling feathers for 20 clams, and buying feathers for 10 clams. So obviously these are kind of outrageous prices, but this is just for an example. So if I wanted to buy a feather, for instance, say I wanted to buy three feathers, I would type slash shop space buy space and then the name of the item, which is feather. It's not case sensitive or anything. And then a space and then the number of feathers that I want to buy. So you can, if you if you don't put any number here, it just buys one. You can put any numbers, so like one, two, or three, or ninety nine, or you can type all to buy all that you can hold in your inventory or that you can afford, or however many are in the shop. So if you type shop buy feather, say three, it says I purchased three feathers for sixty clams. Um, so. Now, for instance, if I wanted to sell these feathers to this shop, since they're buying them for 10 clams each, type slash shop space sell space feather space three. Now, with the sell command, if you do not specify the name of the item, it'll sell whatever's in your hand. Or it'll attempt to sell whatever's in your hand. Um, if you don't specify a number, it should only sell one of the item, I believe. Um, you can also s specify however many to sell exactly, or you can type all to sell all of the ones that are in your inventory. So I'm going to say shop sell feather three. And so I sold those three feathers and gained 30 clams. So that's the basics for using a shop. Um, Another thing that you can do is if the shop has more than one page full of items, for instance, uh, this shop only has one page because it's only stocked two items, but if it has, say, three pages, you could do shop, browse, and then the page number, so like two or three, to show that specific page of the shop's inventory. So... Say um, you wanted a specific item, but you didn't know if there was a shop that sells them. So say I, I want feathers, but I don't know if there's a shop that sells them. I can type slash shop space find space feather. And it shows um, any shops that are within, I believe, a thousand blocks that are selling feathers, and it shows their stock and their prices as well, so you can very easily figure out where to go to buy stuff. Um, it doesn't tell you its exact location, but it should be pretty obvious, because it, it should say the name, and if the shop's set up well, then you can figure it out pretty easily. So that's all well and good, but um, say you want to set up your own shop, like this one I have here. So on our server... Only users of rank member or above can set up a shop. So if you're a member or above, so you want to set up a shop here. This is essentially the walls and floor of this test shop, but without all the decorations. So what you would do is you want to type, in order, you picked out your area and you want to set up your shop with the plugin. So, the first, so what you do first is type the command slash shop 
space. Select. And that turns on shop selection. And what this does is it allows you to select a three-dimensional area to in which you can place your shop. So for instance, this shop was anything inside this wood here. Um, it doesn't work outside of this wood, so if I were to type shop browse out here, it says I'm not in the shop. So if I want to set the boundaries of the shop to anywhere on this floor, first you, um, you, you have to get an empty hand to do this. First you left click on one of the corners and then right click on the other corners. Just go ahead and replace this. So basically the area that this selects is much like this. Obviously it doesn't put the wool there or anything, but everything inside this big wool cube would be the area of the shop here. Except it's invisible so you can't really see it. Generally speaking, the custom is to make the boundaries of the shop around the shop's counter so that people have to walk up to the counter to buy, but it's really up to you. Um, then once you're happy with the boundaries of your shop, you type slash shop space create and then the name of your shop. And one cool thing about this is that it supports spaces. So if I wanted to make a shop called Super Awesome Cool Shop, that would be an OK command like that. That would go through OK. So you create it. As I created shop, super awesome, cool shop. That's that's all well and good. Um, one thing you do need to keep in mind when creating a shop is that it does cost a thousand clams to create your shop. So you need to keep in you need to keep that in mind. And obviously, if you don't have enough money, you're not going to be able to create a shop. So now that we've created our super awesome, cool shop or whatever, yeah. We're going to add some stock to it. Because right now, it's a shop, but it doesn't buy or sell anything. So, let's see. Let's get some items to sell. Let's get sponge, diamond ore, mushroom, and fences. And I'll do the red wool too. So, there are a couple ways that you can manage the inventory of your shop. The easiest way is just to get the item you want in your hand, and type slash shop space add, and that will delete the item from your inventory and increase the number of that item in your shop. So for instance, it increased the number of red wool in this shop by one. Um, so if we type slash shop space browse, it should show that we have one red wool in here. So, uh, but it has no prices so far. So, even if someone wanted to buy it from us, they wouldn't be able to because it doesn't have a, a price. So, fortunately, the shop command reminds you of what of the commands to set the sell and buy price for this item. So, say I want to sell it for 10 clams. Type slash shop space set space sell and then the name of the item, which is red wool. And then the price, uh, just the number. So if I wanted to sell it for 10 clams, it would be 10. Now let's say I want to set a buy price. So I want people to be able to sell wool to me. So I would type slash shop, space set, space buy. And if you have trouble remembering this, remember it's from the perspective of the shop. So the shop sells wool for 10 and the shop buys wool for, let's say, 550. So you can use the decimal to denote fractions. Oops, I need to add the item name. Red wool. So red wool, the shop will now buy red wool from players for 5 clams and 50 shells. So that's all well and good. So if um, look at 
the inventory. It says we have one red wool in the shop that's selling for 10 clams and buying for 550. But uh, if someone buys that red wool from us, there won't be any more. So in order to restock your shop, get some red wool, type shop add, and that adds all the red wool in your hand to the shop. So now you have 65 red wool in the shop. So that's the maximum number that you can sell before you have to restock. So if you look at your shop inventory, shop browse, you'll notice that you have 65 out of 10 red wool. What that means is you've exceeded the maximum number of red wool that you can have in your shop. Um, it's not really that bad, it just means that nobody can sell any red wool to you because you're technically over capacity. If you want to set the maximum number of an item in your shop, you just do slash shop, space set, space max, and then the item name, which is red wool, and then the maximum number. So let's say a hundred. So what this means is that you can have up to a hundred red wool in your shop, um, ignoring any that you add yourself. So people can never sell so much red wool to you that you would have more than a hundred in your shop. That's helpful for. Uh, making sure that you don't lose a lot of money from having people sell items to you. So, yeah, that's that's a good way to regulate that. So, let's just go ahead and add the rest of these items and set some just random prices for these. So, shop, add, set, sell... Sponge 50. Shop set by sponge 25. Shop add. Shop set. Sell diamond or 500. Shop set by diamond or 500. Shop set. No, shop add. Of red mushroom by red mushroom zero five and shop set sell fence shop bow shop set by fence two. So we've got ourselves a nice little shop going here. Um, but, for instance, say that we didn't want to sell fences anymore, uh, just for whatever reason. So if you do shop, uh, remove, I think that's an item name. Yeah, it take, if you do shop, remove, and then the item name, and then the number, it'll return that many fences from your shop to your inventory. However, that's not enough to remove the item completely from the shop's inventory. So here's what you have to do. You have to uh, completely remove the price for selling and buying. Uh, some people think that you have to set the price for each to zero, but that just makes it free, so don't do that. Here's what you have to do. Do shop, set, sell, fits, with no price. And it'll say fence is no longer sold. And you do the same thing with the buy command. And fences are no longer purchased, so you'll see that the f listing for fences has been completely removed from the shop inventory. So, that's a pretty cool thing. Um, that's most of the basic stuff that you can do with shops. Um, one more thing I do want to show that you can do with shops is you can move them. So here's what you do. Say we want to move it to 
the shop that we have here, the super awesome cool shop, we want to move it to this space here. So first what you do is enter shop select mode. So set it to here. Um, so instead of doing, let's go ahead and replace that. So instead of doing the shop create command, shop, well, first we do shop list to show the ID of the shop that we own, which is super awesome, cool shop. So what you want to do is type shop, move, and then the ID number of the shop, which is 38. So that will move the super awesome, cool shop from this area here. So you can see that no longer here. Move it over here to this area. And ta-da! Your shop has been completely moved and all your inventory is completely intact. Um, that's about it. If you uh, type the command slash shop, it'll show you a, sort of a general overview of all the commands that you can do with the shop plugin. Um, but before I leave you, I just want to go over a couple restrictions on things that you can't put in shops as well as a couple uh, tweaks and uh, you know like tips and cool stuff that you can do. Uh, first, you can't put or you shouldn't put any items that are enchanted or have custom names or anything like that into a shop because it does not save any of any special data like enchantments, name, lore, anything like that. The reason for this is because instead of actually placing the specific item into a shop, it just deletes the item from your inventory and then increases the number of that item in your shop. So it doesn't it doesn't take into account enchantments or names or anything like that. Um, another thing is sometimes the plugin will not recognize an item name. Um, for instance, uh, the, they have trouble with comparators, and uh, that's just one of them. I think it also has trouble with carrots. But if you do, um, let's get a comparator. So shop add. So it looks like it's fine, but when you do shop set sell stone comparator. It says redstone dust, so uh, that's that's part of how it recognizes item names from what people type. So instead of using the name for the comparator, you can use the data value, which you can see here is 404. So if you do shop set sell 404 10, it'll now sell redstone comparators for 10. Um, there are a lot of things that can do that that need to use the data values instead of the item names. Um, I don't know all of them off the top of my head. It's usually items that have similar names to other items, because um, it, it might think that you're trying to type the name of another item when you're really not. So if all else fails, you can use the item ID number, and that should set you straight pretty much. Um, but yeah, so that's a pretty good overview of how to use command shops. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, feel free to leave them in a comment below and make sure to visit us at the minecraftblog.com and thanks for watching. Thank you guys so much for watching our very first video. We should have more headed your way pretty soon. The plan is to have at least one upload per week, and we'll be doing stuff like plug-in tutorials, build tutorials, let's plays, server promotional videos, and lots more. If you liked what you saw here, you can click the jack-o'-lantern to subscribe to us, and make sure to visit us at theminecraftblog.com where you can find out more about us and about our servers.